few months into the pandemic last year, the president of Tanzania, John Magufuli, declared his country COVID-free following three days of national prayers. He has since refused to impose a lockdown. He's reopened schools, allowed large sporting events, continued religious gatherings, stopped testing and stopped public communication campaigns about the virus. Tanzania's health minister said earlier this month that the country has no plans to procure COVID-19 vaccines. Joining us for more on Tanzania's unorthodox approach towards the pandemic is Dr. Catherine Chobutungi. She is the executive director of African Population and Health Research Center in Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Chobutungi. Good afternoon and thank you for having me. Good afternoon to you. Now, Tanzania has, a, they've had a unique approach to controlling COVID-19 only a few months into the pandemic last year, the president of the country, John Magufuli, declared Tanzania COVID-free following three days of national prayers. Of national prayers. What is really going on in Tanzania? So what is going on in Tanzania, I think um, when Magufuli declared the country COVID-free and opened it all up, and you know, as, as you've said, it was a unique approach because other countries were locking down, closing schools, you know, stopping public gatherings, so everyone, of course, expected that um, all of a sudden there would be, you know, you know, people dropping dead on the streets in Tanzania, but that didn't happen. So for many months, you know, we've not heard a lot about what was going on in Tanzania, and the Tanzanians and everyone else has been like, okay, perhaps the Magufuli approach worked because um, it, Tanzania doesn't seem to be worse mm -hmm. off, uh, or didn't seem to be worse off than all, you know, all the neighboring countries in the region. But then in the recent past. You know, they've, they've been murmuring to begin with, but then all of a sudden there are signs that um, all is not well because uh, the churches, uh, separate churches have put out statements, um, you know, talking about increase in barriers and, and warning their congregants to be more careful. Uh, just yesterday, the Tanzania Medical Association put out a statement talking about an increase in uh, people with breathing difficulties Social media is full of pictures of people, relatives of people who have but died. But they're not calling So it. something is going on in Tanzania. But they're and not so, calling it coronavirus. Um, they're not saying it is coronavirus. So, of course, uh, mm. you know, they're saying that if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck and eats like a duck, you can make assumptions about what it mm. is. Of course, the country has not come out to say it's coronavirus, but um, by all indications, if you're in the middle of a pandemic which has affected every single country in the world, and people all of a sudden are dying of a disease that has similar symptoms than what is being observed elsewhere, we can make assumptions about what it is, now, Dr. even though the, the country is not coming out straight and saying it's COVID-19. Now, Dr. Chobutungi, the Tanzanian health minister, who's a medical doctor, uh, did say that the country has absolutely no plans to purchase uh, COVID-19 vaccines. Why has the decision been taken not to vaccinate? And does Tanzania have a history of vaccination resistance? So, of course, I wouldn't know why the decision was taken, but mm. observing everything else Tanzania has done, it has been a unique approach as we've described it. Uh, the approach is very different from every other approach. It's different from what is recommended by other national health authorities and WHO and other agencies. So to say they're not importing a vaccine is not a huge surprise. But on the question of vaccine hesitancy, um, you know, there's no evidence that there's been vaccine hesitancy in the past, because if you look at the routine vaccination program that Tanzania has, uh, you know, what is called vaccination vaccine, vaccination coverage is very high. It's between 80, 90, sometimes close to 100% for the routine vaccines that are given to children under the age of five. So which means that there's not been an issue of vaccine hesitancy. Otherwise, you would have been seeing, uh, you know, coverage rates below 70 or below 60. So, this so very... the hesitancy against COVID is new. It's quite um, a, uh, but... a new phenomenon, I guess, uh, as part of the Magufuli uh, effects, if I can call it that. Now, what is happening in the region? What's the what, what's different in the countries compared with uh, neighbors like Kenya and Uganda? So, of course, the, the neighboring countries, when it comes to the approach, it was different. As I said, they did the lockdowns, they closed the schools. Schools have now reopened, but when there are indications that the numbers are going low, 
Now, when it comes to the vaccines, uh, all the other countries have been, you know, very furiously trying to find, to get their hands on vaccine doses for their countries. Mm. So they come up with vac vaccination plans, how to purchase the drugs. They've sourced funding from the, you know, the Amerix Bank. Uh, and so they, they, they are planning and they've started informing their countries. They've come up with phases. So it's been a completely different approach in the neighboring countries. And uh, as, 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 uh, as late as, as this week, Rwanda has started vaccinating its healthcare workers. And almost all the other countries are waiting for vaccines to arrive before the end of this month. So in the East African bloc, I guess it's only Tanzania's approach that is unique. Now, what risk does this pose to the country and the region in general? So, um, first of all, the delays in getting enough vaccine doses to the whole of Africa is a problem in itself. And the problem is itself is that as long as the vaccines are not there and the, and the virus keeps on multiplying in the population, you start getting variants. You've had all the variants from South Africa, from Brazil, from UK. So that is the biggest danger actually that we face. And you've already seen that uh, South Africa has to return a million doses because by the time the vaccine was getting there, the variant had spread so much and this vaccine was not tested on that variant. So the danger with, with uh, Tanzania is that they are not testing, they are not doing surveillance, they are not sequencing the virus that is in the country, they are not even acknowledging there's a virus. So the danger is that there may be a new variant that emerges out of Tanzania. And if that variant emerges, we don't know which variant is going to be. So it's possible that by the time the vaccines are getting to the populations in the neighboring countries, that there's a new variant which has come from Tanzania and maybe spread to the neighboring countries through borders, through you know flights and all that, tourism. And so that even the vaccinations that we are waiting, we were eagerly waiting for, it may turn out not to work because we have a new variant from Tanzania. And so that is the danger that the world faces from, uh, mm. you know, the approach that Magufuli has taken. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Dr. Catherine Chobutungi. Thanks for talking to us on New Central Now.